Dear God, our Father, we gather this evening for the 56th commencement exercises of Holy Apostles College and Seminary. And we give you all praise and glory and thanksgiving for the manifold blessings of so many years. So many of our alumna and alumni that are serving the church so well in the ordained, consecrated, and lay vocations. We ask for your continual blessing upon them and for your blessing upon all who continue to support through their generosity the mission of Holy Apostles, the cultivation of missionaries' disciples for the work of evangelization. In a special way, we thank you for our faculty, our staff, our alumni, for our benefactors, and most especially for our students, for our sisters and priests and lay students, and especially those of you graduating here tonight. Almighty God, we ask that you bless them, pour down the fire of your spirit upon them. May they truly be empowered to serve your church and to build up the mystical body of your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, our one Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. It is my uh, sincere joy and... Um, honor to uh, welcome all of you here tonight or this afternoon and in particular to extend a very gracious welcome to Monsignor Les Janik who is the Vicar General of the Diocese of uh, Norwich. Uh, Bishop Cote because of uh, long-standing commitment was uh, unable to be with us tonight but I'm overjoyed that uh, Monsignor Les is with us. Uh, his association with Holy Apostles goes back many, many years because uh, I first got to know Monsignor Les as a young priest uh, when he was the uh, driver of Bishop Riley many, many years ago. And during the board meetings, uh, at that time I was a 
I actually got to teach and wasn't an administrator, so uh, I didn't have to go to board meetings. So uh, he and I spent uh, pleasant afternoons uh, discussing uh, affairs of state and church uh, while the uh, real decisions were being made in the board meeting. But uh, I've always treasured that, and uh, Monsignor is a great service to the church and to our diocese and to Bishop Cody. And we welcome you and thank you for your presence tonight. And uh, certainly uh, to thank the faculty that um, a seminary and college, of course, relies uh, so much on the faculty and formators. So for both all both of you, uh, faculty and for the formators, my sincere gratitude. We're very blessed here with a very stable faculty, with a very stable staff, with very uh, stable formators, which gives the uh, seminary continued continuity and, of course, commitment and dedication to our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, to our Blessed Mother as Queen of the Apostles, and to our Holy Father, Pope Francis. So my sincere gratitude to all of you. Congratulations to uh, our soon-to-be uh, graduates and your families, as I mentioned at Mass. I know that all who are represented here uh, are your support and are your strength. So we thank all of you for making this night possible. So God bless you all and welcome to Holy Apostles College and Seminary. Father Mosi, all professors, staff members, my fellow students, 
and all present here. I would like to thank everyone in the name of all the Vietnamese sisters who are studying at Holy Apostle. I am the first one to graduate. Today, I have the opportunity to express my gratitude to all of you, especially for the mercy. Thank you for your generosity. This is a pleasure time for me, being able to study English and theology in the United States. I have always received your support encouragement and your consideration that has made me confident to overcome the difficulty of, of my life, especially in my studies. Moreover, the prayer life and the community life at Holy Apostle give me more confidence because here everyone is interested in each other. That has helped to reduce my homesickness. I have not felt lonely, even though I am living far from my country. I do not have enough words to express all my gratitude to you. I am, great, I am grateful to all my professors. Thank you for your patience and your help. I know that you are always sympathetic to us who are studying in a second language. You are always willing to help outside of school hours. You provide the environment that allows us to learn well. Thank you very much. Thank you to all seminarians, I am very happy to be here studying with you. I have learned many things about our different cultures. Thank you for your patience and your help. Thank you to my fellow students. I am very happy to study with you as well. Together, Chris, Seminarians, religious, lay students, and faculty from all over the world give us a picture of the Universal Church. Once again, thank you for the mercy and thanks to all of you. God bless you. Oh, 
Some of today's graduates are already well into their beginning and not able to attend today's graduation ceremony. They will receive their degrees in absentia. Their names will be read out first, then those of the graduates who are here in the chapel this afternoon. For the decree of Bachelor of Arts, Reverend Stephen Sanchez. Candidates for the degree of Master of Arts, Christopher Apodaca, David Berend, Kevin Besner, Richard Birdsall, Reverend John Bullock, Randall Cerner, Stephen Cox, Reverend John Curran, Magdalena Dalton, Candelario de Leon, Paul Drake, Ali Gafari, Sister Christine Hernandez, Abigail Hill, Sister Marin, Mary Helen Hill, Mark Kajeski, Stephen Kovacs, Augustine Lawrence, Anthony Marco, William Christopher Matthews, Thomas McDonald, Patrick McGinnis, Eugene Moonen, Sister Karen Muniz, Sister Dorothy Nakuba, Daniel Offsay, William Perales, Philip Perez, Margaret Probst, Jeffrey Quimby, Marion Regan, Lisa Sarvis, Brian Schaefer, Lawrence Schneider, William Schneider, Tracy Transancos, Hilaire Troyer de Romero, Postmaster Certificate in Theology, Francis Cronin, Sister M. Charles Marie Gwazdowski, for the Decree of Master of Divinity, Christopher Allar, Nathaniel Block, Augustine Lawrence. After the name of each graduate is called out, I will say what honors, if any, he or she is receiving. There are three classes of honors. They will be announced in Latin. The corresponding English phrases for these are, honors are cum laude, with honors, magna cum laude, with high honors, summa cum laude, with highest honors. Candidates for the decree of Associate of Arts. Laura Sickler, cum laude. <laughs> Sebastian Bosney.
candidates for the certificate of preparation for ordination to the priesthood. Please stand, Martin J. Noe. Giovanni Rodriguez Osorno. <laughs> Candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts, Fausto Batista. Kathleen Brule, summa cum laude. <laughs> Frederick F. Byron III. <laughs> Levi Cochinol. R. Michael Garcia. <laughs> Thomas J. Hartman, summa cum laude. <laughs> Sister Martha Huynh Lay, magna cum laude. Brother Victor Moratin, summa cum laude. <laughs> Min H. Pham. <laughs> Candidates for the degree of Master of Arts, Leslie Anderson. Robert Ayers, cum laude. Eduardo Berno, summa cum laude. Laura Brown, summa cum laude. Dr. Michael Crane, summa cum laude. <laughs> Reverend Joseph Badin, cum laude. <laughs> Patrick Dugans, cum laude. Daniel Foley, summa cum laude. <laughs> Leonard Gishiru, summa cum laude. <laughs> John Gauguin, cum laude. Sister Mary Colby Heffern, summa cum laude. <laughs> Reverend Viet Huang. <laughs> Jamal Kimbanga. Han Van Lee, summa cum laude. <laughs> K. 
Dr. Sebastian Mahfoud, summa cum laude. And that was Brother Kevin Mann, summa cum laude. Catherine Moriarty, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kiet Nguyen. <laughs> Reverend Maurus Nguyen. Reverend John Din Van Pham, summa cum laude. <laughs> Reverend Joseph Van Sao Fung, magna cum laude. David Rummelhoff, summa cum laude. Jared Michael Silve, magna cum laude. Kimberly Toussaint, magna cum laude. <laughs> Candidates for the Postmaster Certificate in Theology, please stand. Reverend Long Hui Nguyen. Candidates for the degree of Master of Divinity, please stand. John Anthony Broussard, summa cum laude. <laughs> Joshua Caswell, summa cum laude. Nathan Caswell, summa cum laude. <laughs> Leonard M. Gisharu, cum laude. <laughs> David Kim. Han Van Lei. <laughs> Jasper James Legio. <laughs> Kevin Mann, summa cum laude. Nelson David Munoz Osorio, magna cum laude. <laughs> Benoit Tu Van Vu, magna cum laude.
Father Brian Milady of the Order of Preachers was ordained June 16, 1972 as a Dominican friar of the province of the Holy Name of Jesus. Since his ordination, Father Brian has proven to be an eloquent teacher and writer and a tireless communicator of the love of Christ. A military son, he was born in Syracuse, New York. He and his siblings traveled extensively with their parents. As a young man, he continued traveling as he pursued an education out of his love for the church, earning degrees in California and in Rome. He studied at the University of California at Santa Barbara, earned a BA in philosophy and an MA in theology from St. Albert's College in Oakland, California, and an STL and STD from the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas, both summa cum laude. Now prepared for academic work, he published his thesis, The Meaning of the Term Moral, in St. Thomas Aquinas, in 1986 with Studi Tomistici, Pontifical Academy of St. Thomas Aquinas. In addition to his thesis, Father Brian has published five books, Specialized Morals, Love's Revelation, Man's Desire for God, Light of the Nations, and Both a Servant and Free, as well as numerous articles, pamphlets, and papers. He frequently gives conferences and has written and presented television, radio, and tape series about Catholic doctrine. He is a most highly respected professor here at Holy Apostles College and Seminary, where he has taught theological anthropology, Christology, God, One, and Triune, Faith and Revelation, Fundamental Moral One, Fundamental Moral Two, Moral Virtues, Morals and Psychology, the Holy Eucharist, Social Teachings of the Church, Medieval Census Seminar, Spiritual Theology, and yes, even Latin. Over the years of his service, since 1989, so if we do the math, 99, 209, oh, 25 years, he has taught hundreds of seminarians who have gone on to the Holy Priesthood, and countless religious and lay people who serve the Church today in many ways. Theological consultant to the Institute on Religious Life, Father Milady teaches every year in the summer program at Chrysostom College. He gives numerous retreats every year to religious women and men and to diocesan presbyterates. Since 1998, he has taught in the distance learning program of Holy Apostles, one of the leading and fastest growing Catholic online programs in the United States. The program has granted master's degrees in philosophy and in theology to hundreds of priests, religious, and lay students. Those whose lives he has touched are numerous but the impact of his faith extends to multitudes. Those who have learned from him as students, whether through the homilies of the ordained or lessons of college professors and high school and grammar school teachers, many others have been educated and formed in Catholic thought by his writings, television presentations, DVDs, and CDs. 
He has been recognized by many. He is a member of the Fellowship of Catholic Scholars, the International Society of St. Thomas Aquinas in Rome, the Society of Catholic Social Scientists, and the Society for Aristotelian Studies. Moreover, he is an academician for the Catholic Academy of Science and a Knight of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre. There is much more to Father Brian that is not recounted in this list of numerous accomplishments. Most of all, he is a wonderful colleague and friend with a penchant for quoting Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny, for singing Rogers and Hammerstein songs, and for recounting the lines from his favorite movies and television shows. He can quote Spencer Trady, Tracy and Catherine Hepburn's dialogue in Adam's Rib, Betty Davis's lines in All About Eve, and Lucy and Desi's converse, conversations in I Love Lucy. <laughs> Generations of seminarians fondly remember his outside after-dinner discussions during the fall semesters as he enjoys a good cigar together with edifying conversation. Father Brian, for your decades of teaching theology in courses residentially and online, for your years of preaching homilies at the seminary as a faithful son of St. Dominic, for your devotion to the mission of this institution to form Catholic leaders for the new evangelization, for your use of your towering intellect in the service to Christ and his church, and for your extensive scholarship, for your ability as a master communicator of Catholic doctrine, and most especially for your love of the priesthood and for your fun-loving personality holy apostles, college and seminary, proudly and gratefully bestows the doctor, the degree of humane letters, honoris causa, upon Reverend Brian Thomas Beckett Milady, Order of Preachers. Well, after that degree, I'm tempted to begin with fasten your seat belts. It's going to be a bumpy night from All About Eve. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the Broadway musical, The Fiddler on the Roof, about a poor Jewish man who lived in Russia in 1900, there is a song called If I Were a Rich Man. And the last verse of this song goes like this. If I were a rich man, I'd have the time I need to sit in the synagogue and pray. And maybe have a seat by the eastern wall. And I'd discuss the holy books with the learned men seven hours every day. And that would be the sweetest thing of all. The person who sings this song reflects an aspiration of the human race since its beginning, which is to know God. The fact that we have intelligence draws us on 
to try to understand the why of the world. And the why of our world exists, why we exist, what our very humanity is, can never be fully appreciated until we know God. Thomas Aquinas says this in one of his writings. Since God is infinitely distant from creatures, no creature possesses toward God so as to equal him, either in what it receives from him or in knowing him. So the goal of the creature's progress is not something infinitely remote from the creature, but every creature is drawn to be more and more like God as far as it is able. So also the human mind should always be aroused to know more and more about God in a manner characteristic of it. And thus St. Hilary says, the person who with piety pursues the infinite may find it beyond his reach, but by advancing he makes progress. Aristotle in his metaphysics said that all of philosophy was caused by wonder at the causes of the world, the love of wisdom. But such wonder could only be still when a person could actually experience the primary reason the human race, the, the world exists without medium, and man cannot do this by his own power. In other words, the more we understand about this world, the more we know we don't know what the final explanation is, and we need God. We need revelation. We need faith. And the fascination with trying to know God is what's been really at the source of all peoples who search for him throughout the centuries, discuss the holy books with the learned men seven hours every day. That's what we try to do here. Here, we attempt to help people who are going to be priests, religious, or those who are going to be Catholic leaders in instructing the faithful to understand the holy books. And we try to do this for many hours every day. And we do this again because it's not possible for us to be complete as human beings until, well, we see God in the face in heaven, but we prepare for him while we are here on earth. When I was studying theology many years ago, I survived uh, berserkly, that's Berkeley to you people. I went to the seminary there from 1967 to 1973. What a time to be in berserkly. It was customary in those days to make banners in churches. And one of the banners used to read, the glory of God is man fully alive. Now this would seem to present a humanism to us where we can be happy by just our own power. Well, the people who put this banner up, and this is truly a quote from St. Irenaeus, an early father, forgot the second half of the quote. Because what the quote actually says is this. The glory of God is man fully alive, but man fully alive is man who sees God. The entire history of the world and our own lives is a preparation to see God. And it's absolutely necessary that we put this at the center of the focus of all that we study. And we realize, in order to see God, that God is not something we create from our own emotions. He's not something we create from our own ideas. Philosophy in the 19th century was full of these ideas. The famous British historian, cultural historian Paul Johnson, in his book Modern Times, which is about the 20th century, says that the 20th century began with two characteristic thinkers that basically presented the keynote for the 20th century. The first was Einstein. He discovered the theory of relativity, but to his horror, he discovered that people took this, which was a physical theory, and turned it into a blueprint of life for everything that exists, so that it produced relativism and morals, something that Pope Benedict, as you know, spoke very strongly against when he became Pope, the dictatorship of relativism. 
And Paul Johnson relates that Einstein was so horrified by this development that at the end of his life, when he saw his little equation equals mc squared turned into the atomic bomb, he actually said if he had it to do all over again, he wished he'd just have stayed a simple watchmaker. The other thinker was Sigmund Freud, who because of a flawed theory of the soul, even though brilliant in his research, decided that we were products of forces not beyond our control. And as a result, he did away with the concept of personal responsibility. When we be began to develop relativism and truth and no personal responsibility, this produced the horrors of the 20th century in which more mass murder occurred than at any time in the history of the world. And we can see this in even such a thing as the cartoon strip Calvin and Hobbes. I don't know if you remember this cartoon strip or not, but Calvin says, nothing I do is my own fault. I'm the product of dysfunctional forces over which I have no control. Therefore, I'm free from all responsibility. And remember his toy tiger, whom he imagines to be real, who's actually his conscience says, one of us needs to stick his head in a bucket of ice water. <laughs> this desire to know and experience the truth is what is behind all that we are, and only God can fill this. Again, St. Thomas says this, because our perfection consists in our union with God, we must have access to the divine to the fullest extent possible, using everything in our power, that our mind may be occupied with contemplation and our reason with the investigation of divine realities. The Psalms say, it's good for me to adhere to my God. And Aristotle, a pagan philosopher, rejects the opinion of those who held that we should not meddle with what is divine, but only with what is human, and says, we must not follow those who advise us being human, to think of human things and being mortal of mortal things, but must so far as we can make ourselves immortal and strain every nerve to live in according with what's best in us. We cannot become immortal without grace. We cannot become immortal without faith. And when we experience this, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we realize that the final truth, is a truth where God elevates us to see the world as he sees it, to see time from eternity, to get beyond, as Elizabeth of the Trinity used to say, the secondary causes, and to enter deeply into God's way of looking at the world, because that's not our way. And until this Isaiah's prophecy, oh, you afflicted, storm-tossed, and not comforted, this is what will characterize the human race. This seminary and all that Father Mosey has done and all the time he's been here and the people who stood up, you know, the other people that Father Menard who founded this place, everybody who worked here, what we've primarily been interested in is helping us to experience the divine that God gives us through his grace and faith and to pass that on to others. And this should be something that we are most assiduous about pursuing. Now this is, of course, what we're here for. The reality is sometimes a bit different. I came across something on the internet the other day. Some of you have heard me use this before, that I think expresses in some ways my experience of the reality of teaching the faith, even to seminarians for the last 40 years. It begins with Jesus' statement on the Sermon on the Mount, the holy books were the learned men every day. Then Jesus took his disciples up the mountain and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then Simon Peter said, Do we have to write this down? And Andrew said, Are we supposed to know this? And James said, Well, we have a test on this. And Philip said, what if we don't know it? And Bartholomew said, do we have to hand this in? Yeah, this is the faith, holy books of the learned men every day. And John said the other disciples didn't have to know this. And Matthew said, when do we get out of here anyway? And Judas said, what does this all have to do with real life? And one of the Pharisees present asked to see Jesus' lesson plans 
and inquired of Jesus his terminal objectives in the cognitive domain. And this ends by saying, and Jesus wept. <laughs> and I know exactly how he feels. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, many prophets and kings have longed to see what you see and didn't see it, and to hear what you hear and didn't hear it. And not only that, we, we have Vietnamese here, we have people from who lived in the Iron Curtain and everything, we have the privilege of being able to study our religion and to listen to the holy books from the learned men and not be persecuted for it. How can we possibly take this for granted? Our faith is the most precious thing on earth. It is not just another academic subject to be studied like math. It is the very center of God's knowledge himself that we are asked to penetrate in Christ through Holy Mother of the Church. Therefore, as you receive these degrees, let me encourage you to several things. First, never stop studying the mystery. Christ is something we can never fully understand. I hope that especially the priests will actually pick up a book sometime in the rest of their lives once they leave here. I'd be happy if they actually read the Summa once a year. <laughs> Secondly, in your presentation of your religion, strive for accuracy in sermons, in confessions, in classes. Strive to actually teach what the church teaches. Sometimes when people come to me in school, especially in a seminary school, They'll say, uh, aren't you, uh, be easy on them. I said, okay, now let's see. If you went to a medical school and you were going to have surgery, what kind of doctor would you want to perform surgery on? Someone whose professor had been easy on him or someone who'd actually taught him medicine? And then I say, where would you rather fail? Here, where I can correct you? Or in the confessional where you may have destroyed a soul? You know, we're dealing with life and death realities in this school. It's not just another subject. Thirdly, be loyal to the magisterium of the Catholic Church, both in its past and present form. Many of us who teach religion realize that we're dealing with three generations of uncatechized adults. How can this possibly be when we have an infrastructure in place to try to evangelize them. Remember, it's Christ's doctrine we're speaking. But we have to do this as Catholics through Holy Mother of the Church. And lastly, remember that theology is the science of God. It is our participation in the knowledge which the saints and angels have in heaven after they die. As a result, it's as much a matter of prayer as it is study, although we must never underestimate study. When I first came to this school, people show me over and over again this film, The Reluctant Saint, you know, about St. Joseph of Cupertino, the Franciscan who never studied, and they asked him the one question he knew on the exam and passed. And I guess the students thought this was supposed to encourage me never to ask them questions or encourage them to study. And I said, yeah, well, just remember, St. Joseph of Cupertino also used to levitate. <laughs> the next time I see you flying around the room, <laughs> you won't have to study. But until then, I'm sorry, you have to do it the hard way. Because grace, remember, doesn't destroy nature. It builds on it. So it isn't going to do any good to sit and do all these prayers if you've never read the book. God expects you to open the book and look at it occasionally in order to pass the test. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is what we should be about. The dictatorship of relativism has taken over our world. So many people lie in so many places. So many people cheat in so many places. Our morality has been shoved into a cocked hat. We must not allow that to happen to us. But as we are permitted to listen to the holy men Study the holy book seven hours every day. Let us always look deeply to Christ, who after all is the final wisdom. When Thomas Aquinas, 
who's reputed to be one of the most brilliant men ever to live in the Catholic Church, received a vision from our Lord. Jesus asked him, What reward can I give you, Thomas, for all you have written, taught, and studied about me? And St. Thomas's answer must be ours. Non nisi te domine. Nothing but you, O Lord.
Good evening. I'm Deacon Kevin Mann. <laughs> I'm Sebastian Mafu, I'm Vice President of the College. I'd like to tell you a story about one of our students named Lisa, Dr. Lisa Tavano Hall. Lisa was pursuing a Master of Arts in Theology with us when she succumbed to the complications from melanoma on May 5th, 2013. She was 49 years old. In those 49 years, she did more than many people who live many decades longer. She traversed the country, being born in Niagara Falls, and making her home in Fair Play, California. She married and had a family. Her husband, Dr. Craig Hall, is here with us this evening. Dr. Hall, or would you please stand? Come forward, if you would. Oh, it, it, don't sit. Come forward, if you would, and stand up here. That'll make it easier for us to give you something in a few minutes. 
Together they had two sons, Nicholas Craig and Christopher William. She loved her family, mentioning them often in conversations with our faculty. She studied psychology at many levels, earning bachelor's of arts degrees in psychology and in biology from San Diego State University and a master of arts and a doctorate in psychology from the University of California at Davis. Her impressive intellect can be seen in part in the title of her dissertation, Psychophysical Measurements of Cost and Benefits to Tactile Targets Correspond to Cortical Organizations. To me, that just sounds obvious. <laughs> <laughs> and she used those degrees. She taught psychology at the University of California at Davis, and most recently at California State University at Sa uh, Sacramento. She was devoted to Catholicism. She cherished the faith and tried to cultivate that love in others. It was for this reason that she entered the Holy Apostles Master's program. She was over halfway through the program when she died. One faculty member called her a lion for the faith. I had her in class. I agree. She thrived in our program, bringing her spiritual life to bear on her academic work. We pray that her love of her faith has come to fruition in the beatific vision. For her example of embracing her vocation as wife and mother, for her life of service in instructing and nurturing others in the faith, for her love of Christ and the church, and for her laudable work as a theology student, Holy Apostles College and Seminary proudly and gratefully bestows posthumously a certificate of completion in theology upon Dr. Lisa Tavano Hall. Holy Apostles College and Seminary is proud to present the Student Leadership Award to two online learning students who demonstrated exceptional dedication and leadership throughout their time in our program. Unfortunately, neither of those students could be with us today. We are proud to present this award to Dr. Stacy Tranzankos, who has completed her Master of Arts in Theology for outstanding leadership in the development of our Alumni Association. Dr. Stacy Tranzankos is a convert to the Catholic faith who earned a PhD in chemistry from the Pennsylvania State University in 1999 and worked as a research chemist for DuPont for five years before deciding to become a full-time homemaker. She is married to her husband, Jose, and together they parent five children between the ages of three and ten on a homestead in the Adirondacks. Additionally, Stacy has two grown children and three grandchildren. Stacy enrolled in the theology program at Holy Apostles in 2010 to study dogmatic theology, and in December 2013, she published her first book, Science Was Born of Christianity, the teaching of Father Stanley Yaki. Additionally, she edits and blogs for a variety of Catholic online publications. For Dr. Stacy Trazankos, 
Congratulations. We are proud to present this award to Richard Birdsall, who has completed his Master of Arts in Philosophy for Outstanding Leadership in the Dead Philosophers Society. Richard Birdsall grew up in Jacksonville, Florida. He joined the Army after finishing high school and spent four years as a Vietnamese translator. After the Army, he earned his college degree before embarking on his career as an air traffic controller and later as the computer systems manager for air traffic control systems for most of the southeastern United States. Richard enrolled in the Holy Apostles graduate philosophy program and through the learned and inspirational instruction of the college faculty came home to the Catholic Church on Easter Sunday 2012. Richard continues to live in Jacksonville with his wife, Marion. He spends his time teaching humanities and philosophy at a local college, reading, and continuing to learn about the majesty of the Catholic Church. Presented to Richard Birdsall. Congratulations. Presentation of Academic Awards for Performance of Dogmatic Theology, Reverend Brother Kevin Mann. For performance in sacred scripture, Reverend Brother John Anthony Broussard. <laughs> For performance in history, Reverend Brother Joshua Caswell. For performance in moral theology, Reverend Brother Nathan Caswell. May I ask uh, Sister Carmen and uh, Sister Marissa if uh, you could come a little closer? <laughs> they're always, they love to be in the limelight. They're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're eager. <laughs> oh, you could face this way. Uh, 1989 uh, was a most wonderful year in the long and storied history of Holy Apostles College and Seminary. As we noted in the introduction and tes testimony to Father Brian, 
He arrived in 1989, and also we were most blessed with the arrival of the Franciscan Apostolic Sisters from the Philippines. And in response to a call to serve the seminarians, the priests, the faculty, Mother Superior generously and graciously entrusted uh, to Holy Apostles uh, members of their community. And uh, Sister Carmen, uh, although not the first year, but I think the second year, uh, was uh, first uh, assigned to serve at Holy Apostles. So as they say, what goes around uh, comes around. And here we are 25 years later, and um, because of the needs of their community that the Franciscan Apostolic Sisters uh, will not be here next year, and um, so it's our opportunity to express our great, deep, deep, sincere, and heartfelt gratitude to the two, the two of you for your years of service here, but through you, uh, to your entire community, uh, to Sisters Josie, your Mother Superior, uh, I can express uh, the gratitude and the love that uh, all of us have for the two of you, but for all of your sisters who have served here for these 25 years. Uh, we have often noted a few years ago they were honored with the Spiritual Service Award that the work in the food services, which they do so graciously and so well, and as I often say, a seminary like an army travels on its stomach. And uh, they have taken care of our stomachs for these 25 years and together with Alan uh, have given us uh, an incomparable team and also Ethel and um, also Amy. So, um, but it's not that that has been so important to us, but your witness to consecrated love and life, your dedication to our Blessed Mother, to your faithfulness to the Holy Hour every Friday evening, uh, to your witness to prayer and simplicity of life, and for the great love of St. Francis. And of course, Father Menard, our founder, like your founder, a Franciscan, and um, we give thanks to St. Clair and to St. Francis uh, for the spirituality of your community, and our prayers go with you and with your community that the Lord continues to bless you, to bless your community with many vocations, and uh, thank you so much for being Mary among us, and uh, God bless you always. Yeah. 
Monsignor Jacek, your magnificent Father Mose, Father Malady, Father Peter Kuser, distinguished faculty and family, friends and my fellow graduates. In preparing for this speech, I asked my classmates what they wanted me to say on their behalf, and their responses were nothing not so much, but if you need to say something, make sure you're very brief. <laughs> then I asked one of them, how brief should I be? One of them told me, remember a commencement speaker is like a corpse at an Irish wake. You are needed for the ceremony, but nobody expects you to say much. The French poet Anatole Francais once said, to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream, not only plan, but also believe. I remember when I was six years old, I wanted to be Jesus. Yes, I said Jesus. Being born and raised as a Catholic, my parents introduced me to the faith. 
So every Sunday morning, my mom would wake me up and get me ready for church. My dad then would put me on a bicycle and take me to a parish which was five miles away from my home. While sitting at the back of the bicycle, I would constantly ask questions and hold a conversation with my dad until we got to church. On one particular Sunday, I became curious and wanted to know, why do we go to church every Sunday while we would stay at home and pray to God? My dad, to avoid the big question, simply said, we go to church to meet Jesus. Eventually, when we arrived in the church, I was very eager to see Jesus, so I sat in the pew and waited to see Jesus. Then the priest and the servers processed in and went into the sanctuary. What amazed me was to see that the priest looked different from the rest of us. He was a missionary priest from Italy. This was my first time to see a white person. So the mass went on, but in my mind I kept thinking, this must be Jesus my dad was talking about. <laughs> Simply because he looked different from the rest of us. He spoke in my native language, but with a lot of difficulties. Then I thought to myself, how is it possible that Jesus had taken so long to learn my language? <laughs> so after Mass was over, the priest invited all the children to take a photo with him. He then shook hands with everyone and we were all happy. As we were going home, I told Dad, you know what? When I grow up, I want to be Jesus. He makes everyone happy. Then he told me, if you want to be Jesus, you have to work hard and believe in yourself. In three weeks' time, I'll be ordained a priest, and the dream that I had when I was six will be realized. I might have been very innocent and naive to have wanted to be Jesus, but my dream is still valid. Because as a priest, I'll be serving the church in Parasona Christi, in the very person of Christ. My dear graduates, each one of us has a story to tell as how one got here today. But what runs across those different stories is that someday in the past you had a dream. And today is the day when one of our many dreams comes true. We did not just remain at the level of dreaming, but we have worked hard. We have believed in ourselves. We have believed in those who have worked with us during our years of study. We have trusted Holy Apostles as a place where our dreams could be nurtured and mature. I remember vividly the first day I stepped into Holy Apostles and Seminary at the time of orientation. I felt welcomed. I was overwhelmed by the kindness and the hospitality of the staff and students. And I say to myself, this is where I want to be a place where we no longer see each other simply as a student or faculty, but as brothers and sisters who love each other. From that day, Holy Apostles became my new home and my new family. Here at Holy Apostles, we have not only been learning about philosophy, theology, or pastoral knowledge, but also it's a place where diverse cultural experiences and faith tradition are shared. When I arrived here, I was amazed to see, to meet different students from different nationalities and different cultural backgrounds. And within no time, I started to learn and to appreciate what others could give. You don't need to go overseas to have a cultural exchange. You can get it right here at Holy Apostles. This diversity has opened our understanding of the distinctive mark of the church, which is its universality. This experience has changed some of us to come out of our comfort zones and experience the otherness, because it's only when we move our hand from, away from our face that we can start to see the bigger picture. Our final year here at Holy Apostles cannot pass our memories without calling into mind some very difficult and challenging experiences. These adversities 
tested our resilience and our trust in God. These experiences also prove to us what it means to belong to Holy Apostles' family. Who would ever forget the cry, fire, fire in St. Philip? When a cloud of smoke rose from the building, when our hearts were sunken with grief and our hopes shattered. As if that was not enough, four days later, a black cloud hovered again around our seminary as Sister Lucia who had fought for her life after a fatal car accident. Our hearts were filled with great sadness as we, sell, as we knelt on the snow and pleaded with God to spare her life. How would I forget laying on bed, hospital bed, for a month at the beginning of this semester, wondering if the cloud of sickness would ever pass my life? and whether I would be here with you today to graduate. These are very difficult moments, but none of these experiences robbed of our dreams. Instead, they have strengthened us and defined our identity as brothers and sisters keepers. My fellow graduates, let us remind ourselves the goal of our gathering here this evening. It's not merely to receive our diplomas, although they're important, but to witness the world that we have come out of the dreamland. And now we are ready to engage ourselves as agents of new evangelization. As Pope Benedict XVI told us, to be new evangelizers is not a privilege, but a commitment that comes from faith. The world is eagerly waiting to see how much we have learned. The world doesn't care how much we know, until they know how much we care. As one day I went to see Father Mose in his office, and I was so anxious to know how many credits I needed to fulfill my degree. He told me, my son, let me tell you this. In my vocation as a priest, nobody has ever asked me how many degrees I have. People out there want to see how well integrated you are as a priest. As Pope uh, Paul VI said, modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers. And if he does listen to teachers, it is because they are fast witnesses. I would like to thank our faculty for everything you have done for us. None of us would be here without your invested time and ed energy. You have encouraged us to pursue our dreams. I know there have been times when you have wondered, do the students appreciate what I have done? Do the students really understand how much of my time I have devoted to ensure that they succeed? Let me assure you we do appreciate what you have done. And all of us graduating today, we will be forever be in your debt. I would like also to thank our wonderful staff that works at St. Peter's Hall, who selflessly give their time to make things run in this campus. Our staff who work off campus for the campus, Dr. Mafud and his team. Those who have kept our campus beautiful and safe, and those who kept our bellies full. Thank you. We don't say enough thank you. My dear graduates, as we part ways, let us remember and remind ourselves to keep our dreams alive. Even if those dreams may seem to fail, let us keep dreaming. Let us not be afraid to dream even if those dreams are bigger than ourselves. Our dreams will give meaning and motivations to our lives. Our dreams will make us who we are called to be. Let this not be the end of our learning the end of our education, because graduation is not the end. It is a commencement. Congratulations, and thank you all.
a newly ordained priest uh, ran to his pastor on Sunday morning and asked a question, what should I preach about? The pastor, in his wisdom and calmness, answered him, preach about 10 minutes. <laughs> my remarks should not be longer than 10 minutes. It is my joy and privilege to be with you all this evening, this afternoon, to represent Bishop Michael Cody, Bishop of Norwich, as we all come to celebrate the achievements of the 2014 graduating class. We gather in prayer to congratulate these graduates and the completion of their courses, together with uh, very reverend Douglas Mosey, President and Rector of the Holy Apostles College and Seminary, with all the members of the faculty and staff, we share in the joy of these graduates, families, and friends. As Jesus Christ, who summoned his disciples first, and then, and only then, sent them out with a command, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel. So today, dear graduates, Jesus Christ is sending you with the same command, to always proclaim the one who sends you, to proclaim the good news for the rest of your life by every honest word you say and by every good deed you perform. And the Lord, remember this, is not sending you empty-handed. He has already empowered you with his spiritual gifts, a treasure from heaven. And four of those gifts are for your mind for your intellect, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and right judgment. These gifts of the Holy Spirit will help you to make the right decision in your life. And there are countless, countless decisions you have to make, and they are ahead of you. There was a Broadway play about a young man who rejected his family and became hooked on drugs and alcohol. And in the last scene of that play, this young man looked up into heaven and in a tortured voice, he cried out, O oh Lord, how I wish you had made a life like a notebook, so I could look into the pages of my own life and which I made mistakes, turn them out and throw them away forever. This is a sign, an example of how many people live with all kinds of regrets because of their past decisions. And this is my promise to you today. If you ask the Holy Spirit before you make any decision in your life, if you put yourself on, on your knees before the Lord and ask for guidance of the Holy Spirit before you make a decision, you will never, never regret. The other three gifts of the Holy Spirit are for your heart, for your will, that is reverence, courage, and that respectful fear of God. It doesn't mean that we have to be afraid of God, not at all. This gift of the fear of God tells us how powerful our God is. The astronomers tell us that we have more out there in the universe, more stars and galaxies than the grains of sand 
on all the beaches in the whole world. That's beyond our comprehension and understanding. Yet it is the same God who shaped each one of us into who we are, who created us. And this is a sign to us how much we should rely on God more than on ourselves, on our limited human potential, which is also a gift from God. St. Thomas, uh, St. Augustine, rather, after his conversion, he said, when I was young, I was afraid of losing my money. I was afraid of losing my job. I was afraid of losing my girlfriends. But now, after my conversion, the only thing I really fear is Jesus passing by. Dear graduates, don't let Jesus ever pass you by and you will live most, the most meaningful life. Let us pray. All-powerful God, your knowledge is infinite and your wisdom immeasurable. Your pure intellect includes an understanding of what is logical and what is true and what is lasting. In times long past, you send us your prophets to teach us that true wisdom comes from you alone. Then you send us your Son, Jesus Christ, to teach us the way to you and bear witness to your undying love for each one of us. Heavenly Father, as we, your servants, gather together today in this chapel of Our Lady, Queen of Apostles, to celebrate the accomplishments of the students of the Holy Apostles College and Seminary who receive their degrees and now leave the comfortable nest of their alma mater to move on to new chapters in their lives, we invoke your blessings upon each one of them. We ask that you fill their hearts, their minds, in their lives with your wisdom, with your love, with your peace. May your spirit of understanding help them to acknowledge in their daily life the truth that to meet a human being is a major challenge to mind and heart. That to meet a human being is an opportunity to sense your presence and to see your image. Almighty and ever-living God, grant also to, to each one of us a dedication to true knowledge and love of learning until every one of us arrives at the knowledge of you. With the Blessed Virgin Mary and Holy Apostles, we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And all are invited to continue our celebration in St. Peter's house. Amen. Hey. 
Thank you. 